Good evening, Bears fans, and welcome to our Sinus Sports Network. I'm Erin Devine, a junior on the women's basketball team. And I'm Madison Wilson, a sophomore on the softball team. And this is Sports on Main. Our Sinus had an eventful weekend, and we have the recap for anyone who missed it. We'll also give you a preview of the action to look forward to this week. All right, Bear fans, let's get to it. Go Bears. We present to you, Sports on Main. For the women's team, it was a busy Saturday in Collegeville. Isabel Deal, a junior for the Bears, placed in fifth place in shot put with a distance of just under 32 feet. She also placed sixth in the weight throw with a distance just short 43 feet. In the 60-meter hurdles, Rosie Cuomo earned fifth place with a time of 10 minutes and 84 seconds. Her teammate, Tori Bearden, finished in seventh place with a time of 10 minutes and 90 seconds. Both senior Lauren Ferguson and Ryan Wathier finished 6th and 7th in the 3,000 meter run. The times for this race were 11 minutes and 18.88 seconds and 11 minutes and 23.60 seconds. Brooke Adams, a freshman, finished 9th in the mile with 5 minutes and 37.33 seconds. In pole vaulting, junior Julia Pearson placed 8th with 8 feet. Right after, senior Chelsea Stitt placed 10th with a little over 7 and a half feet. Men's track and field competed in the Frank Colden Invitational on Saturday. Freshman Brody Myers, fresh off setting the school record for the second time last week, continued to dominate once again, placing first in pole vault with a mark of 14 and a half feet, his fourth win in four Invitationals. Senior Ken Sprankle placed fourth overall for the Bears in long jump. Junior Isaiah Battle and senior Nick Galbraith both posted top five finishes in the shot put and weight throw. Battle earned a third place finish in the weight throw with a mark of just under 50 feet. He also placed fourth in shot put. Galbraith finished fifth place in both. The shot put throw was almost 42 feet and his weight throw went 45 feet. Junior Tim Holzaprof finished fourth place in a weight throw with a personal best of 49 and a half feet. Freshman Ethan Chambers finished third overall in high jump with a personal best mark of just short of six feet. Sophomore Michael Agaby earned a fifth place finish behind a jump of five and a half feet. Agaby also competed in the triple jump, placing sixth with a mark just under 40 feet. Two Bears competed in the indoor pentathlon as sophomore Muhir Mataransan finished with a third overall cumulative score of 1,922 through the five events. Junior Tyler Ortiz finished fifth with a score of 1,691 score and won the long jump portion of the pentathlon with a mark of 18 and a quarter feet. The 4x200 relay team of sophomore Devon Greaves and the three freshmen Mason Ovaletti, Tyler Wilson, and Malachi Frazier finished third overall with a time of 1 minute and 36 seconds. The women's team faced Gettysburg twice this weekend, losing both and dropping their record to 2-17 and overall and 2-12 and in conference play. On Friday, Ursinus rode a 10-4 run to take the 15-5 lead after one quarter, but the Bullets answered back in the second quarter, cutting the Bears' lead down to 15-13. After the Bullets tied the game at 15 apiece, Ursinus answered with a 10-0 run. The two teams traded blows, leaving the Bears with a 33-21 lead going into the half. The Bullets' offense would come back alive in the third quarter, outscoring the Bears 21-9 in the third frame. Despite the late push by our sinus, Gettysburg outscored the final five points of the contest left with a 63-49 conference victory. Saturday's game saw the Bears lose again as they fell 69-48. The men's team lost a heartbreaker to Gettysburg 79-77, dropping their record to 10-8 overall and 7-6 in Centennial Conference play. Gettysburg quickly opened the game with five straight points before the Bears rallied off an 11 straight on five consecutive made field goals to go up 11 to five. The Bears and the Bullets went back and forth until the Bullets used a 21-4 run over the span of seven minutes and 34 seconds to take a double digit advantage at 34-23. The Bears fought back to make it a 34-30, but Gettysburg closed the first half with nine straight points, taking a 43-30 lead into halftime. Her signs fought their way back at the start of the second half, going on on an 8-4 run to cut the deficit down to 47-38. Gettysburg reeled off five straight points to pull ahead 71-70 with two minutes and 56 seconds left before Hughes put Ursinus back ahead with two free throws. The Bullets responded with a three-pointer to go up 74-72, adding a free throw following a Bears miss on the other end. 
Each team traded layups on their next possession to leave the Bullets up 77-74 with 39 seconds left in regulation. With 19 seconds left on the clock, Hughes drilled a three-pointer, tying the game with one possession left, and the shot clock turned off. The Bullets made the most of the final possession with a driving layup with one second left and holding on for the win. Ryan Hughes led all scorers with 35 points. We caught up with Hughes after the game to discuss how he recently joined the 1,000 Point Club. Ryan, you just accomplished a huge milestone in your career of scoring 1,000 points, something only 29 other men that have went to Ursinus College have done. What does that mean to you, and what does that say about the program here at Ursinus? Uh, it means a lot to me, um, the trust my teammates have in me um, to, you know, score at key moments or do whatever. Um, I just think, you know, it's an incredible, like, the guys before me here, um, Coach Small always talks about them being great players, and, you know, to stand alone with them on this list is a big accomplishment for me. I mean, in high school, it was cool, but, I mean, at, college, at the college level, I think it was it's even better. Um, I, I got to give a shout-out to all my teammates I had from here this year, previous years, um, just being great guys, always supporting me, pushing me to be better. So that's definitely one thing that, you know, stands out to me being on this list. So, Ryan, I want you to illustrate what it was like scoring your 1,000 point, you know, during the game, what was going through your mind, you know, what, what, what energy was running through your body. What did your teammates say to you when you got to the huddle? What did your coaches say? What was, what was going on? Take us inside of, of that, that specific play and that, you know, your accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of emotions. Uh, it was something incredible that happened in my life. Um, my teammates were super proud of me. As soon as, like, I scored it, you know, they all ran over to me. Um, my roommate, Kyle Maurer, actually, he said, he put it on Twitter later, that he actually gave me the assist even though he shot the ball. Um, so we were joking about that, um, but in the huddle, like Coach Small congratulated me, but everything was just kind of shifted after that towards winning the game. Um, I mean, it was a great accomplishment, but that's like where my heart is. I want to win the game. It doesn't matter what I do, you know, how many points I score, I just want to win. So after like everybody congratulated me, like right away, I was the first one to say like, you know, it's in the past now, let's just get the win at this point. So Ryan, I know that during the game, everything is exciting, everything is going, everything is moving fast, your adrenaline's high, emotions are high. What did it mean to, you know, take a step back and notice that your family th was there to watch this um, and, you know, the crowd that attended the game, they witnessed your greatness. What did that mean to you in that moment and now reflecting back on it? Yeah, so it means a lot. Um, you know, my family's always been there for me, you know, through the ups and downs throughout my career. Um, my dad, who coached me in AAU all the way up until my senior year, um, definitely had a, a big impact in my life. Um, so I think just them being there for me, my grandparents, my girlfriend, and all the fans, like, just to show that support. Um, even after the game, like, I mean, I told my parents before, like, hey, like, during the game, you know, we're not going to take any pictures. We're just going to – it's going to happen, and, you know, and I'm going to try to win the game after that. So – um, they understood completely. Um, my dad obviously knows that being a basketball coach and everything. So I think, you know, just them being there just, just felt great. Um, you know, they've been there for me my whole life, you know, buying me shoes, driving me to practices, doing all this other stuff that, you know, it's not required for all parents. I mean, they supported me and, you know, and actually my brother who works on a podcast actually gave me a shout out on that podcast the next day, which is really cool because like, probably millions of people listen to us. So I'm like, all right, like, you know, it's pretty cool to just be shouted out on something like that by, by my brother, um, who's always been there for me as well, who I played with his senior year in high school. So that's just really, something really cool for him, for all of them to be here for me. And, you know, it's great. So Ryan, real quick, I just want to dive into the nitty gritty. Um, with your career here at Ursinus, what has been, you know, your mindset, your work ethic uh, to keep and sustain a high production in the classroom and as well as on the court? Yeah, so I mean, like I said earlier, um, a lot of my teammates always just push me to be better no matter if, you know, sophomore year I was leading score in the league, they always said I could be better than that as well. Um, also with like the coaches, like previous coaches like Coach Hack coming in doing individual workouts with me during the season just to make sure I was ready for games my freshman year. Um, it goes down to like, there's a lot of like ins and outs throughout our program, like watching film with Coach Small and just breaking down some stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just like everybody says, you know, the product is what you put in. So um, a lot of guys noticed that early on, and I think, you know, it's just one thing. Like 
about me, about this team now. Like, guys are in here day in and day out, no matter what, day off, whatever. We're like, we're in the gym trying to get better. Um, so I just think, like, that kind of stuff really matters. Ryan, with you now becoming the 30th player in our sinus men's basketball history to hit 1,000 points, what does this mean to recruits maybe watching at home, looking at you see through the website, seeing us on social media? What does that mean to somebody who's interested in becoming a part of the men's basketball legacy? Uh, I think it means a lot. Um, you know, it just shows how much fun we have as a team together. Um, you know, we always preach this meeting with recruits, like, we're an actual family. Like, a lot of teams can't say, like, they care for the guy next to them. Um, we actually mean it, um, you know, in our locker room. It has a big sign, our new film room. It has family, heart, passion, character, all these words that actually, like, mean something here. Um, and I think that's the biggest part about us is, like, we're so close. Like, we do everything together. Eat lunch, eat dinner, do whatever, hang out. So I think all that, you know, for recruits, you know, looking at our sign, it's like that's a big thing. Um, we care for one another. You know, we care for each and every one of our individual success. We care for team success. And I think that's another thing. You know, we, we care about winning a championship more. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams out there with guys like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get my 1,000 point, and then, you know, I don't really care if we win. But here, like, you know, we're, we're, we're a team. Like, we want to win first and become a great team at our sinus. And, you know, so I think recruits should really look into that um, first. All right, Ryan, last question. I'll get you out of here. I know you got class. Um, what can you tell the viewers at home and the UC community what we can expect for the remainder of the 2021 and 2022 basketball season and what we can look forward to in the future? Yeah, so we're a young team. Um, I think, uh, you know, you'll see us just having fun playing basketball, um, worry about us getting better every day. Um, that's really all it is, um, all it come down, comes down to. Um, I just think, like, you know, we're just going to battle every game. You know, we're going to be a tough team. Like, there's a lot of teams there that will say they're tough, but they're really not. Um, so that's what we focus on a lot is just being tougher than our opponent, you know, whether it's mental toughness, physical toughness, whatever. Um, so you'll see us battling game in and game out to get the job done. Thank you for joining us on uh, Sports on Main. Uh, I'm here with my boy Ryan. Ryan Hughes, congratulations again on the 1,000 point. I'm about to score two points right here, or we can call it three. <laughs> Put the mic down. You know, back in my day. The week starts slow for the Bears with not a ton of games. Both women's and men's basketball teams will be making the trip down to Swarthmore to play at 6 and 8 p.m. on Tuesday, February 8th. Thursday is another Centennial Conference matchup for the women's basketball team. They will be hosting Bryn Mawr at 7.30 p.m. in Helfrick Hall. The men's team will be taking a trip to Widener at 7 p.m. That wraps it up for this episode of Sports on Main. Thank you for tuning in, and remember to tune in again next week for even more Ursinus highlights and recaps. From everyone here at Ursinus Sports Network, I'm Erin Devine. And I'm Madison Wilson. And as always, Go Bears! Go Bears!